Hey, it's Keith Townsend, Principal of the CTO Advisor. I'm joined with Robert McNeil, Product Manager. Product Marketing Manager. Product Marketing Manager for Advanced? Uh, accelerated Computing at Dell Technologies. Accelerated Computing at Dell Technologies, which translates to AI in these days. Uh, all the advanced computing that most enterprises are doing is AI related. We're at VMware Explore at the end of the show. It's mm -hmm. been a great show. And surprisingly or not, a lot of the content was AI focused. We hear the big stories about companies investing $10 million to do large language models, et cetera, needing these huge NVIDIA GPUs that take up 5K to 10K of power per server, which in perspective, you know, my experience, a uh, typical colo facility we have maybe five to 10K of power going to an entire rack. We'll get into power in a bit. But the reality is, Robert, that most companies and most use cases don't require kind of these big honking GPUs that we can't get, get a hold of. And then when we do, do we have the right power requirements for it? So we're gonna talk about the Dell Technologies overall product portfolio, especially as it relates to Intel, and Intel's AMX, we're not going to get into speeds and fees of AMX, but the ideal is that Xeon-based acceleration is going to be good enough for some use cases, probably the vast majority of use cases. At some point, we're going to need some type of GPU acceleration, and then we're going to talk about kind of the maxims of where we can get to. Right. So Rob, thanks for joining. Sure. So give me an overview. What 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 are what what is Dell seeing in the market? So uh, you know, obviously in February of this year, when uh, uh, the OpenAI ChatGPT project went live, there was uh, a, a huge level of interest across the enterprise. Not not just uh, companies that have already been active in the AI space, but uh, you know, became a readily apparent to I think the general population that um, almost every aspect of the workplace can be some way augmented uh, to by, by Gen AI. I mean, as a, as a marketing person, it's almost impossible not to take advantage of it to come up with the, the uh, framework for a, a blog or a, or a white paper, um, uh, because then it, while it does require human intervention to make sure that it's accurate, because this mm -hmm. is all beginning stages of a, of a, new, uh, of a new branch of uh, computer science, um, a, the uh, impact that it uh, proposes to uh, the enterprise for uh, accelerated decision making and more accurate decision making, and uh, and and just for basic functions like uh, uh, software development. Um, you know, we're talking about we've got uh, a variety of different ways to accelerate uh, um, applications, uh, possibly across multiple frameworks. Uh, there's been some uh, evidence that um, uh, Gen AI code generation, while while there are risks and concerns about uh, releasing sensitive IP to uh, the public uh, versions of these uh, large language models uh, are some of the best possible tools for quickly developing highly portable code that could run on a multi uh, multitude of, uh, of uh, CPU or GPU platforms, uh, which would typically tire, require very uh, specialized skill sets that wouldn't exist in a single human being. It would be across a, a large team of people. And uh, um, despite the cost for some of these uh, higher end, you know, eight way or four way uh, GPU powered servers, um, the, the benefits are, are huge. Uh, when you look at uh, what the equivalent would be to get to that level of acceleration in code development or um, some sort of competitive angle within uh, enterprise such as document discovery. Um, so uh, uh, we made an announcement um, at uh, Dell Tech World here in, in uh, Las Vegas in, uh, at, uh, that uh, we had partnered uh, with uh, NVIDIA and other companies to uh, build the um, uh, uh, thing called Project Helix. We brought that to market as a Dell Generative AI Solutions. At the end of uh, July, July 31st, we launched our first uh, uh, Dell Valley design uh, for Generative AI. And um, uh, here at uh, VMware Explore, uh, uh, we've supported um, VMware with the announcement of VMware Private AI Foundation, uh, again, using a lot of the same uh, tools and uh, uh, same architecture, but then uh, running on top of uh, um, uh, VMware Cloud Foundation. Um, 
And uh, you know, like you said, uh, a lot of there's a lot of interest in getting started today, and uh, the availability of GPUs does not have to be a, a barrier to entry. There are uh, there are options such as AMX. Um, so any uh, Intel scalar uh, CPU uh, has the um, ML or machine learning acceleration uh, via the AMX chipset. It's supported within uh, TensorFlow, Cafe2, um, PyTorch. Uh, we have a demo on Dell.com uh, that. Uh, um, uh, illustrates using um, the AMX chipset for uh, smart cities application, uh, doing real-time um, traffic pattern analysis, looking for safety hazards, and uh, uh, identifying traffic, uh, you know, congestion. It, in in the example we show, uh, just using the native CPU, the number of uh, streams that can be uh, decoded uh, real-time then how many more can be decoded and uh, encoded and decoded and inferenced in real time with the uh, native CPU and AMX chipset. And then taking a step further, combining uh, either just the native uh, Intel CPU with the um, Intel PCIe Flex GPU. And then you know, the, the, the obvious Winner in this uh, in this um, is going with the combination of the AMX chipset and a, a Flex GPU. So that I think you highlighted a trend that I'm seeing yeah. in data center enterprise architecture in general, which is there's this I there's this desire to bring AI in as just another application. Mm -hmm within the infrastructure. But what we see in the media is mainly this use case where, you know, where we're seeing that there has to be some GPU involved. These are some pretty right. interesting use cases that, that have nothing to do with GPU and just using regular onboard right. accelerators. Right, right, yeah. Well, I mean, it can't belie the fact that when, it talk, when you're talking about uh, very um, compute intensive tasks. Uh, so inferencing is is uh, is less demanding. Certainly, uh, uh, inferencing for non uh, large language model applications like uh, like uh, traffic analysis for smart cities. Um, uh, but to get the you know the density and in some cases the large memory spaces that are required for not just doing the initial uh, training and customization for an LLM. But for an enterprise that sees their own version or their their uh, their branch of an LLM that has been uh, meticulously uh, trained to have higher accuracy for the type of of uh, work that they are doing, uh, that is a, com a competitive asset in, in their portfolio. So um, the uh, they want the infrastructure to continuously train and retrain as they get uh, results back from inferencing and and can. You know, verify the accuracy of the model. And that's when we uh, go from, so we've got here CPU, PCIe, uh, which is what I think most people think of when they think about uh, a GPU, and then going up to the, the latest and current generation for four-way all the way up to, you know, eight-way GPUs on the uh, um, PowerEdge 9680, or, oh, sorry, XE9680, uh, is the uh, open, uh, compute platform, accelerator module interface, and the um, and one example of that is the uh, Intel Data Center Max uh, GPU 1550 uh, that uh, is one option on the XE 9640, um, which is also interesting. It's the first in this high end lineup uh, from uh, Dell Technologies and the PowerEdge line that. Um, uh, supports direct liquid cooling for both the CPU and GPU. So, if you look at the uh, the 9680 or the uh, or the um, four-way equivalent of the 9680, the the, um, the 8640, those uh, are both are air-cooled systems that uh, you know are six RU, which mm -hmm. you know uh, um, the 9640 by using direct liquid cooling and uh, um, you know, some specialized uh, rack infrastructure from, for uh, uh, data center cooling and uh, power efficiency from Dell can shrink down that uh, footprint to 2RU. So as, as we see a trend because of the pow high power requirements uh, of uh, GPUs that uh, there is a trend that is 
not yet taking off in HPC, but starting to take off in companies that uh, are looking at uh, revamping infrastructure for, for Gen AI and GPU acceleration. Uh, to go up to 45 kilowatt, from 10 kilowatts to 45 kilowatts, all the way up to 100 kilowatts per rack. And uh, the 9640 using electrical cooling, that, that high density of, uh, of uh, GPU acceleration can you know, complete, get, get a, uh, a completely full rack, 42 RU rack with uh, um, you know, up to 45 or 100 kilowatts. So you don't have an inefficiency of uh, utilization per rack because of uh, um, you know, running out of rack space because of air cooling. Yeah, this is something that I've been asked a lot about. Mm -hmm. One, the one, the availability of facilities that can yeah. provide you know, 100 kilowatts of power mm -hmm. into Iraq is that that's a slim line. Ironically, you know, kind of bringing in another persona of my CTO advisor, Flying Cloud RV, we've been thinking a lot about how do we bypass the local uh, electric system right. of the RV to power a full rack, mm -hmm. even in that uh, environment. So as we're thinking about edge deployments, mm -hmm. et cetera, power, w solutions for power will right. come. Right. The problem then becomes cooling. Right. And that is that second level challenge that I've been talking to customers about. How do they cool this? How do they get liquid cooling right. into data centers that were not designed mm -hmm. to do liquid cooling? Or, or edge case is a good example where maybe uh, looking at your, your use case for inferencing, uh, CPU might be the right answer. Right. Um, because well, at cost, um, at, you know, at uh, scale that's right for you know, disaggregated uh, uh, inferencing that, that uh, you know, maybe in an inhospitable location, and then you know the uh, obviously the power and cooling when you're when you're at the edge. Yeah. So Robert, I really appreciate you stopping by the CTO Advisor Studio and sharing Dell's gen not just generative AI AI story because I love the smart cities example. Mm -hmm. This is stuff that people have worked been working on for years, optimizing tight resources, making sure that we have the capacity to support future operations. Robert has been one of my more astute product marketing specialists. He already provided a link below if you want to mm -hmm. learn more about what Dell is doing around AI. If you want to learn more about what the CTO Advisor is going on and more about the CTO Advisor Studio, you can follow us on the web, thectoadvisor.com. My DMs are open. I am drinking from not just the accelerator fire hose, but the AI fire hose. And all of this is new learning to me. Come along and learn along with me. DMs are open on most social platforms at CTO Advisor. Talk to you next, CTO Advisor Studio.